first thing um, that you probably want to do is try to just look at the source code of the APK. Say we have we have the Twitch APK, and we want to look inside it and see what's going on. So um, there's a couple different ways to, um, or a couple different tools that I usually use for it. Um, they both do a similar thing, like they kind of do the same job, but they go about it a little bit differently and depending on the situation, one might be better than the other. But the first one is a tool called APK Tool. If you're on Linux like I am, um, you can actually um, just install it from the package manager. So sudo apt-get install apk tool. apk tool is the first tool that um, is useful for uh, decompiling and looking at the source code of apk files. So we can just go ahead and <clears throat> run this right now. Um, we run apk tool d for decompile and we can do the 12.3 version and it'll decompile it. Now if we look we have this um, directory that's the name of the apk without the dot apk at the end and if we cd into that directory and now we see all of these files and directories and this is actually the source code and all the resources that go into making the twitch application now that we're um, inside the the file structure and we can like see all the internals of the app now we kind of need to know what to look for and um, kind of the first thing to look at is going to be this android manifest.xml file that's going to be in every single android app that you've ever installed there's always going to be an android manifest.xml file and it's gonna have all all kinds of stuff in it um, you don't really need to know what all of it means um, one kind of important thing though uh, to look at when you get into this in the um, Android manifest is this section right here uses permissions these right here are when you run apps on your phone and it pops up those boxes that say this app requires permission to do this in order to whatever these are the things that it requires so when you install Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, and you open it for the first time and it says, um, allow access to camera, it's because it has uses permission, Android name, android.permission.camera. And sometimes um, just like what permissions it has right here, this could be a security finding. That's pretty much um, all I can, I'll talk about, not the Android manifest right now. That's kind of like a brief um, little talking to about the APK tool. Um, and you might remember there was another tool that I mentioned that I kind of do the same thing um, for decompiling and looking at the source code. And that's a tool called JADX. And this one as well, it can be um, installed by the command line with the package manager jetx whenever i use jetx i typically use the gui version so you just run the jetx dash gui and that just brings up an interface so um like typically when i want to just mess with things on the command line that's when i use apk tool but the gui gives you some like search functions and gives you like a a a prettier structure and like you can just see things from like more of a like a, a wider view um, so I'm gonna run jetx gui and now I need to select the APK that I want to look at 
Maybe I can try the Google Play, the one that I downloaded from the phone earlier. So here we have the like the file structure of the APK, and you can read all the um, source files and all that. Um, I I will kind of do like a a little like tip for when you use JetX. Um, typically. Anytime you open a APK file with JetX, it doesn't entirely decompile everything off the bat. So I usually have to click the search function, and then you see down at the bottom, it's like going through the decompiling. Um, yeah, it's already done, but it was a pretty small app apparently. <clears throat> but um, for whatever reason, it's just kind of a little quirk of the tool. When you click the search function, that tends to like finish up all of the decompiling. But um, now that now that we're here, you can actually use the search function to look for things that maybe like a reportable um, vulnerability. Like maybe there's a password that's hard coded somewhere, and you can search in just the code. You can search in just just the class names. Um, you can search in the comments because sometimes developers will put stuff in the comments that may reveal something that you could use. So that's just a little um, intro to what JetX does and how you can use it. That's a little brief primer on like how to decompile apps and how to look at the source code. So now we need to know what to actually look for. Now I have this Andro Goat um, app on the phone. One thing that I have discovered in several apps that I've tested over the years is things being hard coded in the source code of the app. Things like passwords and API keys and usernames and email addresses. This little Android Goat app has a pretty good example of how you can find um, hard code things and how you can exploit them and use them to your benefit or why they're bad. Um, so I'm going to click on this hard code issue. So basically there is a promo that gives you this I suppose that's supposed to be a watch that they're selling for $2,000 and there's a promo code that you can enter and you'll get it for free. But when they were um, designing the app, they messed up and they hard coded the promo code in the source code of the app. So because we know how to disassemble um, an APK and search through the source code, we can probably find that promo code and get our $2,000 watch for free. I'm going to use the JADX um, to do this one because it has the search function, um, which is pretty convenient for finding like specific um, hard-coded things. I, I typically use APK tool when I'm just like kind of combing through the, um, the source code for like finding whatever might be stuck there like if they have hard-coded things i'm just like looking in areas for things that might be hard-coded but if i know specifically like this is the hard-coded thing that i'm looking for that's usually when i'll use JetX because it has that search function and it has the gui and lets you like navigate through the file structure pretty easily so i'm gonna run JetX gui again androgoat.apk open file and it's decompiling it and again I'm just gonna press the search button just to make it complete decompiling again it's just like a little quirk that I've noticed over the years of using this tool in the app it said um, enter promo code to get below product for free and in the little field it says enter promo code here so I'm just gonna guess that the thing we're looking for is probably labeled as promo code so I'm going to search, um, and I'm going to do case insensitive. That's usually what I do, just because sometimes they capitalize things and sometimes they don't. Um, so I'm going to search promo code, 
I'm looking at code, not just class and methods. It came up with 13 results. Um, and now we see right here, promo code dot element equals new 2019. We can actually go to that line of code and it created the promo code object and it set promo code dot element equals new 2019. So I'm just going to guess that that is probably our promo code. I'm going to put in new 2019, which was that promo code we found in the source. Hit verify. Now, it you probably can't read this, but it popped up at the bottom and said, congratulations, this item is now free. And the price is now zero. So we just got a $2,000 watch for free because we know how to look th through the source code of an uh, Android file, and the developers were lazy and hard-coded the promo code into the source. That was a specific thing that I wanted to look for, so that was something that I looked at JADX for. But if I just want to go in cold, I don't know anything about the app, and I'm just kind of snooping around and seeing what I could find, I'm going to start with APK tool. Just for one more example, um, for like sort of more of a real world example with the Twitch app, API key.txt. That looks interesting. Um, let's look at that. So this is a base64 encoded string. So there are tons of um, base64 decoders you can find online and different places where you can get them. One that I really like that I use a lot is a tool called CyberChef. So I pasted that big long base64 into the input field and now I just go to from base64 and move it to the recipe and now it decodes the base64 into readable text. This is what was decoded from that base64 string and um, it's actually not anything that special but that was something that um, was kind of interesting to find a, a file named API key.txt that kind of set sparks off in my brain saying, ooh, that's something that could be a problem. But it turned out not to be a big deal. But those are the kind of things that if you see in the file structure, you can be like, I need to look at that more. Um, so just a um, reminder, that was in the assets directory. We had the res for the resources. We have the assets um, and we have the Android manifest.xml. Those are typically like your three first stops whenever you're initially looking at an, at an application. You want to check out those three places and see if there's anything that looks suspicious that you need to look into more. We went over how to decompile APKs using both um, APK tool as well as JADX and kind of some scenarios of how you might use either one of those or both of them. After we looked at decompiling APKs with um, APK tool and JetX, and then we um, looked at a few examples of how to find hard-coded um, passwords and secrets and things in the app and what locations of where to look at to find them.